In this example, we want to look at effective use of MicroStrip discontinuities. Uh, one of the things that people often forget is that uh, when you're using MicroStrip models, there are some limitations associated with them. Uh, chiefly among this is the fact to remember that uh, these models are all developed around the fact that the propagation through these conductors is going to be quasi-static. That means that it's approximately TEM, but not precisely TEM. So we want to be really careful about the situations under which uh, we use models to make sure that this assumption holds. Uh, what I'm going to do here to demonstrate this is I'm taking um, a model that, uh, or a set of microstrip here where we have two adjacent bends that are separated in this example by an appreciable line length uh, that's much, much longer than the substrate thickness and um, much uh, longer than the uh, width of the lines themselves. And uh, in one example here, uh, I have the model using standard microstrips. And over here, I've taken the exact same structure and extracted it with uh, Axiom uh, from a different schematic using the extract capability, uh, but using the Axiom EM solver. Uh, if we go and look at the results here, we can see that we get fairly good match uh, up to a rather high frequency. Um, there is some structural difference and some loss difference here, but we really don't get uh, a major difference until we get up here near 20 gigahertz where we uh, clearly have some issue with um, with the accuracy, but overall it's a fairly good representation um, of the uh, performance, whether we're looking at the EM results or whether we're looking at the model. Uh, in contrast, let's look at the results uh, when we have a much shorter line, in this case 40 mils separating the two bends. And what we see is something rather different. Uh, we get a fairly good match up to about uh, half the frequency that we did before, and then we start getting uh, not as great performance here where we clearly have some issues uh, picking up the uh, accuracy of what's going on. Um, to really understand this, what we can do is use Axiom to look at the current as it goes through those bends in the case of the rather short line where the bends are interacting. And I've uh, created a uh, current animation of this in three dimensions. So let's pull that up and uh, let's look at what's going on with the current. Zoom in here and now using the tuning capability uh, will tune through the phase as it goes through those bends. And if we do that, you can see that uh, there's a little black line that indicates the, um, the low current phase. And as it comes through the section here, you can see that it in the midsection between the bends, it's on an angle, whereas in the sections up here, it's kind of straight and perpendicular. Up here we have very good TEM propagation capability and uh, down here as well, but when we get into the line between the bends, the bends themselves cause the current to bend and we don't get good TEM approximation. Now the, the um, bending of the current within the bend itself is taking care of the bend model, but we assume that between bend models we have appreciable line length so that the um, current can again become straight and we get good TEM propagation. Clearly when we get uh, into this bend section and there's not enough line length between the bends, uh, that doesn't happen anymore. So just as a caution, one of the things you want to be aware of is that when you put bends close to each other, that you're able to reestablish good quasi TEM propagation so that the bends don't interact. Um, and this is a, an example that we're able to show using Axiom and using the circuit models in the AWR element library. If you'd like more information about uh, microstrip models, about Axiom, or about the extract flow, you can go to the website and look up examples or white papers uh, or contact your AWR sales professional.